Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw with Insider Travel Report, and I'm here with a very familiar face, Samantha Brown of Places to Love. And Samantha's just started her second season of Places to Love on PBS. We're going to find out all about that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Samantha, uh, I, I, I've seen the program the first year. It's an amazing program. Uh, first of all, tell us how you started that program and why it's different from what you've done in the past and say, the Travel Channel and other, other channels that you've been on. Sure. Um, well, one, I'm not just a host. I'm also the EP, the executive producer. Which is good. You can yeah. fire yourself, actually. I can well, fire myself. It's right. When we have long days, I get mad at myself. I really do. Uh, so I'm really a, a part of every decision that's about it, from who we meet, what we do, how it's edited, and it feels fantastic. So. Uh, that's how it's a little different and just the approach uh, with Travel Channel I did a lot of things that maybe people couldn't afford mm -hmm. uh, it was very high-end or maybe it was um, a little contrived to be really special on camera mm -hmm. but not something people could do I want to make sure that everything I do is accessible to the traveler and so now you're here in your second season and how many episodes will you have this year 13 we've 13. got a full that's a full television season yeah. that's the full the full the whole enchilada. The whole enchilada <laughs> on PBS. Now, now how, you choose different destinations. Tell me a little bit about how you select your destinations that you're going to cover. We really, it's kind of like a buffet. We want your main courses, which are like the Hong Kongs and the Seoul Koreas, uh, New Zealands, the, these destinations that everyone is literally interested in seeing. Mm -hmm. And then we put in some amuse-bouches, some little surprises, mm -hmm. like uh, destinations that are never considered travel. I think you call them the B-side des right. destinations, exactly. right? B-side. And doesn't that resonate? You've got the A side, which is the greatest hit, like a, like a Washington, D.C., but the B side is Baltimore, mm -hmm. Baltimore, Maryland. And um, I love showing uh, cities that have these great experiences, but they don't have the crowds and they don't have the cost. And it keeps everyone traveling, which is what we want. And also, you also really focus in on the experiences and the people in these destinations, right? Absolutely. I mean, it's. It, I think anyone who's traveled for an extensive amount of time understands just how important that human connection is. We're getting less of less of it in our real lives. You know, we you know text people, we email people. Travel is where we're connecting. Travel is where we're meeting eye to eye. Mm. And so, I want to make sure that the people watching can meet the people I'm meeting as well. Now, what were some of the surprises you found it for this year's season? Some of the destinations and some of the people you met. Oh, I tell you, Lafayette, Louisiana is just... That is I saw that picture of you with all the crayfish. I know right away I'm, yeah, I want to go. Exactly. Right? I mean, uh, there's Cajun music and Zydeco music, and there's this group of people who left you know, Canada a long time ago and, and came to Lafayette, so they maintained their culture, their language. People speak French. So you feel like you're, you're, it's, not, it's, like it's in the United States, but it's not of the United States. They call it Cajun country, and it, there's a reason for that. So there's this distinct feel you get when you arrive, and a saying there is that they've never met a stranger and so you're immediately sort of welcomed into their space and I love it. And there's another one episode you're, you're going to be covering uh, later in the season uh, to Santa Fe, New Mexico, I believe, where you're in, in this incredible, I don't, well, you describe it. It's an art installation, but it's a lot more. It's, t it's, it's impossible to describe. It's unlike anything I'd what, ever what seen. What is it called again? It's called, well, it's, it's a, uh, an artist collective called Meow Wolf mm -hmm. and the actual installation is called the House of, of Eternal Return. And what you're doing is solving a mystery. You enter into a house that's a family's house but the family is gone and you have to find out what happened to the family and there are notes and you can go through their mail and it kind of get, it taps into everyone's idea of kind of like snooping in other people's homes and you find out little bits and pieces and then all of a sudden you open a refrigerator door but it's a portal to another world and you be, go into different dimensions. I saw you sliding into the world. It's like I, Alice in Wonderland, it's, right? It's, yeah. it's exactly like <laughs> Alice in Wonderland. So it's something that um, children three years old to people 93, year old, uh, 93 years old can really enjoy and just... Uh, and, and to, in, to interact with art in that way is spectacular. Now, another destination very close to my heart, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And I think you said this was one of your favorite episodes because of a certain interaction you had with a certain species of dog, yeah, right? so you can go to a place called Berryland in Martigny, Switzerland, and you can get within a litter of St. Bernard pups. And they're mm -hmm. big litters. They're like eight, ten dogs. And they're tiny little fluffy things, and they just, uh, it's just wonderful. And you can walk a St. Bernard, or a St. Bernard can walk you, um, but it's a way to interact with the natural 
national dog. They're bred there. They're bred to be therapy dogs, and you can also learn about the history of the dog as well. And then there's another one you went to. I mean, I would have never thought going to Baltimore. Which uh, yeah, like and Baltimore is actually, I wanted that to be a part of season one, and we, we couldn't swing it. And Baltimore, Maryland, you've got this city that for a few years ago was known for strife, you know, uh, rioting and, and racial strife. And I wanted to show it as this, this city of just do-it-yourself people who put on the big boy pants and change their city, you know, one person at a time. And of course, it's, it has amazing museums. Mm -hmm. It's got great food, and um, and it's got a, a great history. It's one of the you know original thirteen colonies. So it's this it's this this rare this kind of rough gem that again, if you're going there for a weekend, you can eat at great restaurants, have a great time. You don't have to break the bank. It's just something you can do for. Well, a quick it's not trip. that far away here from us in New York. Exactly so right. Great. It's a train yeah. ride away. Now, somewhat some a bit farther away, uh, and something that I know you enjoy and you have a new association with. And it, it, we'll talk about that in a second is river cruising yeah. and you have an uh, episode that looks at that a little bit yeah right? you know that's always been on my bucket list I remember seeing a, a, a magazine article about river cruising probably 15 years ago and I just thought well that sounds perfect so um, I'm really excited about being my partnership with Emma Waterways mm -hmm. they are an exceptional family owned river cruise company and um, I uh, we did an, an episode there on the uh, the Rhine River mm -hmm. and it was a 10 day cruise we did the Rhine and the Moselle and just seeing every castle and cathedral but having a a great time along. I've done that with Christine Karst, who is the one of the co-owners. It's an amazing cruise. And every, if you know Christine Karst, um, almost everyone they work with is like her. They're mm -hmm. lovely. They're um, embracing. Um, you just have this personal experience, and like I, I like to describe it to people that 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 river journey is such an amazing part of how you discover these cities. You don't realize it mm -hmm. until you're on the river and it just slows you down. And I think that's something that we're all trying to do is just slow down our travels, make us enjoy them more, make them really count in our lives. And that type of travel really does that. And then indeed, later this year, you're going to have a very special event where you're going to be Exactly. I am the godmother of a ship, which uh, there's no living with me now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting everything with champagne bottles in my preparation for it. Well, you got to be. You got to be careful. You got to get at the right time. You I know, know exactly. Time. Yes, yes. So but it was a huge honor, and it's of the Emma, Emma Magna, which is now the lo will be the largest river, one of the largest river cruise ships on the Danube. That's exactly yeah. it. Uh, you know, uh, twice as wide, twenty percent more passengers, so not a hundred percent more passengers. So again, space and slowing things down and having a more personal reaction. But you know, being a godmother of a, a brand new state-of-the-art ship. I just thought, wow. Yeah, we'll Again, no I, I, I actually will be there. I will yes? be there oh, okay, for the trip, and I will see you. Uh, I'll help break the champagne if you like. I appreciate like, right that. Now. I appreciate uh, that. Anything yeah. to help. Yeah. Uh, now, the, lastly, uh, talk a little about your sponsors for the show because that's so important in a PBS uh, broadcast situation now, right? So important. Yeah, I think people don't realize that you have to raise all your own funding, and so you have to get organizations who believe in you and and what you want, and they believe in travel. And mm. AAA Travel is one of them. I think 60 million members, probably 59 million mm. of them, don't realize that they have incredible uh, perks and special packages curated for just them and it's all tied to that membership they've always had mm -hmm. and so I think that's one thing that I want to try to get out there like everyone wants to save on travel so we can travel more and it's been available to you the entire time it's not it's not like an added on membership it's a part of your standard membership and then Emma Waterways and they were the first to sign up with me and say hey yeah we like what you do and um, and they have been incredible um, partners in the show and just helping us do what how, you know show the travel that we want to show now where can uh, our viewers our, our travel advisors viewers see see your episodes now I mean it is in PBS stations across the country mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. here in New York it's on WLIW I believe channel 21 right. uh, but it where, where can they go find out where, where to find that public television station near them yeah you can go to my website samantha-brown.com and if you click on TV it'll say when to watch you just click on that and then you plug in your destination and it'll show what what PBS stations are showing it so that's how you find it well that's a great 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 advice on that and finally uh, you're really connected now with a lot of travel advisors. I know you've been hosting or being the master ceremonies for the ASTA Global Conference the last few years. I, I don't know if you're going to do it this year. Hopefully you will. Uh, but, but you're very connected with advisors. And how could advisors use your shows to help them sell more travel maybe? I think it's to understand where the psyche of the traveler is coming from. Mm -hmm. And it's that they don't want to be 
um, a part of these massive groups seeing these sort of canned experiences that everyone's told them they should. And, um, and you know, I feel like you can go to Paris and you don't have to go to the Eiffel Tower. People want more. They want to connect to destinations. They want to meet people who do things, who create things with their hands, because we all want to be inspired by travel. And we don't have anything else other than travel that gives us. I always say, you know, travel is one of those few things in our lives that, that mark a fresh start. It's a new beginning. And and as, a, as an agent and as an advisor, um, you really have to um, know your people personally and, and see, well, how about we try this? Because people are really much more, um, I think they're much more adventurous. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to do the exclamation points, I call them. Everyone thinks that travel's about exclamation points. Mm -hmm. Where do you find the commas? So I think to, as an advisor, to balance out a trip between the exclamation points and wow, to the commas of, oh, this is nice, is really important to do. Well, Samantha, good luck with this year's season. Uh, we're already a, a couple episodes in, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, good luck with the rest of the show, and thank you for taking the time to tell us all about Places to Love. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>